for the first time when you install the software it will automatically come with the server started okay but for the next time when you are coming with so if you are done with the work so you will just go inside the folder scripts so under the under the personal edition you will have the scripts folder where you just need to click on shutdown once you are done with the server and similarly if you want to up the server you just need to click on startup dot patch file if you just double click on this patch that will automatically run your database server as well as tomcat server okay so for me it is already up and running so here you can see this is the server which is currently running all right so whenever the software is installed you can see the drive called wherever the default directory which you have chosen c drive inside this you will see this folder called prpc personal edition inside this all the necessary softwares are available you just need to go under the scripts folder click on startup.batch file when you are starting and once you are done you can just click on shutdown.batch file all right so this is how uh, the scripts has to run when you are, whenever you are going to start so once the server is started you will see the message as server got started it will take around uh, whenever it depends on the uh, ram size so if your ram is around 16 gb or 8 gb at least so it will be a bit faster otherwise it will be a bit slower okay so here uh, once the server is started you will just go to your any of the web browsers and there you need to specify local host okay so since it is running in our local so you can just specify local host and the default port number with the server which we have given for the tomcat is 8080 so you can go with this default port number if you have given something else you can just update the port number as 9080 or 9090 whatever it is followed by there is a default servlet context which is pr web all cap all small letters okay so pr web is a servlet context that you need to provide okay so this is how you need to provide uh, if you have run that in the local so this is a web-based portal which we are going to use to run the application and this is called as a pega tool all right so initially when you are coming uh, once you enter this so you will see this window in this format all right so you can see this is a pega infinity pega 8 is also called as pega infinity okay so this is the name which is given for pega 8 version okay so pegas not for pega 7 or not for pega 6 pega 8 is called as a pega infinity all right so here you can you have a default user id given with the personal edition which is called as administrator at the rate pega.com and password is installed all right so password is have the cloud instance running so you can still continue with the cloud free trial okay yeah, so just okay. Uh, i will show you the backend how it works in the packer so nothing to worry uh, so since in the real time also you won't be having the infrastructure access so you will be having only given the portal url and you will be having one operator id which is a user id given to log in and do the work okay so in the real uh, real application when you have, whenever you start with so you'll always be uh, not having access to infrastructure none of it so only like a lead system architects or a, a person who is leading or uh, supporting wise so who is doing support job for the infrastructure so they will have access to the middleware okay so not everyone will have an access to the backend so database also you may not have it because we have a complete control from this portal itself so whatever the options that are being provided we can completely manage and control via the portal itself all right so this is the default user id which is given with the personal edition and similarly for the cloud you may have uh, the user id which is it's the one which you have registered so that user id you can utilize it all right so once i log in you can see a window which is called as development studio okay so this is the place where you will configure all the things as part of development 
So as I mentioned, Studio is nothing but a place where you configure all the items. So Studio is, is a place where you will design and do the development. Okay. So this is a Studio which we are going to do, which we are going to utilize it for development purpose. Okay. So all the capabilities for the system architect level. Okay. So system architect is one of the beginner level for the Pega system architect who is going to do the development as part of the pega studio okay so there are multiple studios available one is dev studio app studio and admin studio okay so these are the also used for the development purpose dev and app studio app studio usually given for the business analyst for a easy way of understanding the pega tool Okay, so it doesn't include any kind of development related aspects. It is kind of a layman who doesn't know the technical terminologies. Okay, so even a business analyst can do the development in Pega by using this app studio. So for that, Pega has introduced this app studio for giving you the access to develop the applications without having a complete knowledge on the technical aspects. Okay, so that is one more studio which is being developed in Pega 8 version. This is not available in the older versions. So Pega 7 version, we have only development studio and development studio is also called as designer studio. Okay, so if you see in Pega 7, this name was designer studio. Whereas in Pega 8, it is called as dev studio. All right, and in Pega eight only this app studio was introduced for the business analyst or anyone can do the development or anyone can do the design by using this app studio i will show you the app studio how it goes so you can switch to any of the studios by selecting this way similarly we have admin studio this is for doing the administration activities okay so administration activities in the sense there are some kind of a background related tasks which we can use it and that admin studio will give us a complete picture on the health of the application all right so here uh, the admin studio we are discussing so admin studio is basically a place where you will configure the administration related activities okay so if i switch to admin studio you can see multiple options available which gives you the health of the application so how the servers are running and what are the background things which are running. So all of the different type of uh, uh, tasks which are being performed with, with respect to the infrastructure and with respect to the health of the servers. So we can identify how many resources are connected to the server and whatever the uh, system level information that is available. So all these kind of information, you can see that under the admin studio. All right. Now going back to the dev studio. So here you have multiple options available on the right side and the on the left hand side. All right. So first of all, let's go for the left hand side where you can see these are called as explorers. We call it as recent explorer, case type explorer, data type explorer, app explorer, records explorer. So these explorers will give you the instructions, the, the things that you will develop it is in the format of uh, rules so pega everything that we do a development it is in the format of a rule so rule is something like a logical compilation unit so as like we use a file structure in java and c or a python so something similar to that pega everything is driven in the format of a rule so whatever we create it is called as a rule all right so we can define those rules by using we can manage those rules by using these explorers so these explorers you can navigate each and every explorer by using these options which are available inside this each and every explorer all right so i'm going to show you what are how to use these type of explorers so but for now let's understand the terminology what we call so here we can understand these are the explorers that we are going to utilize in order to generate or in order to manage the rules. Okay, so everything that we are going to uh, define is called as a rule and that is something 
we are going to manage by using these explorers we have on the on the top we can see the studios and besides the studio you can see the name of the application so which you are able to access so the user as of now i have used is administrator at pega.com this operator or you can say user yeah. id is used to log into the application pega platform so this is basically uh, application which is a default application given to you for the operator which you have logged in so by with the with the help of credentials that you logged in so it is given an access to an application so which you are going to work okay so something like whatever the new applications that you are going to access it so that access will be configured for you to log in once you log in you can see that default application on the top okay you always have an access to switch to other applications by using this option switch application all right so this way we can access multiple applications now i will tell you one of the scenario why we use the pega bpm all right so pega is basically a software tool to develop the bpm applications and crm applications so what is meant by B bpm is business process management you are going to manage a business by using a process all right so you are going to manage a business by using a process the process is something we define as part of the business all right so let's take a simple example what is a, to understand the bpm so it's a step-by-step -step approach to automate and manage the business workflows so let's say as a recruiter if i'm trying to take a employee or onboard an employee so what i need to do uh, as a recruiter i need to see whether the job is a uh, uh, job requisition is created in my organization so once the job request requisition is created so the candidate who is appearing for the job so i have to apply for the job and then that necessary resume and the details which are given so we have to update in the system once i update in the system then the next process continues to schedule the candidate for an interview all right and once the interview is scheduled then the first level of interview is cleared then he will go for the next level of interview so in this way i have to design a process so once the candidate is appearing the there are different set of stages that he has to go through okay so one is initially he is applying for a job next is in order to clear the interviews the process for the job all right once he clears the interviews then he will be given an offer so these are the different phases that we are going to define as part of recruiting a candidate the same thing applies for multiple other scenarios where you are applying for a passport so there might be a different procedure involved for a passport so you may apply online for a passport then you may ask for coming for a uh, verification process and once the verification is done then you may go for some other process procedure as part of passport similarly you may have a driving license similarly for the healthcare applications for the insurance applications for the banking applications so across all the domains we can apply this business process management the process we need to define and wherever the process is involved where you have different type set of users who are involved to collectively combinedly done a task so a task or a target is achieved by using different set of actors placing on a single platform so that platform we are bringing together different set of users who are having different set of roles so here as a manager i have a set of access for the candidate to verify and i can just give approvals to him only with respect to the technical capabilities all right so once he is cleared with the technical manager the hr manager is uh, role is defined in such a way where he will give the authority to give the compensation as per the market or not i am not supposed to verify the compensation how much he has get how much he received it 
okay so that is something i am i have certain restrictions not to do certain things so there are different set of users who are involved in this particular job uh, a candidate to receive a job offer so in order to receive a job offer whatever the users who are involved with so those users who are going to to get an offer so they have this different set of uh, roles and responsibilities to achieve it okay so once they're done their job process once they are done with their role they cannot interrupt into another another person's role but still they have an option to switch to different roles okay so that is something like you have an option to switch to other application Okay, so you have an option to switch to another role for the same application as well. Okay, so as of now, I have an access as a recruiter or I have an access as a manager as well. So being a recruiter, I can switch to a particular application, the same application as a recruiter as well, to the same application as a manager as well. So that is something give me two different roles for the same application so that is something we can achieve in pega all right so here the business process management brings us to work on multiple applications by switching okay only once you switch it your restrictions are also applied in such a way okay so that restrictions we will be configuring it and once you configure it and give the access to that particular user who logged in so that is something we can utilize the options which are being given okay in the similar way you have multiple options provided in the studio so we need to know all these options how to utilize it are you clear so far or you have any questions i get the gist of it um in terms of the applications themselves um what do they what is an application essentially so what is it inside pega inside yeah. um so yeah application is basically end to end process where you define it so a container where you will define your uh, case types or, or else the businesses that you are going to deal with so you are going to define them in the application okay so let's say i have developed an application for abc client okay so for a client abc i am defining an account opening process so there's a bank abc and in that bank i am going to define an account opening application so account opening is one of the application and in that account opening application i can apply a process where i can define a process how to uh, how to open a bank account so there could be multiple accounts again it could be a savings account it could be a current account or it could be a loan account so there are multiple accounts which are available so those different set of accounts i can open it as a as part of a process but here the main application which i am going to define is something like account opening application so the application is a container where you will define all the necessary things as part of your business as part of the client business i am going to define everything which is required to be utilized for a user who logs in okay so once i logs in i could able to successfully create a account or a bank account or a loan account okay so once i have an access to the application then only i can utilize the businesses so whatever the sort of businesses which are defined in this application so those things i can utilize it only once i have an access so application is a higher terminology or you can say a container where you will be accessible for okay so once you are given an access to the application then only you can utilize the sub tasks which are being there in the application are you clear yeah so pega platform is also an application is a default application which will bring us certain features that is something like pega provided features so you doesn't need to develop uh, you doesn't need to uh, tell how to define a business 
so there are so many out of the box or we can say there are so many platform provided things are available to utilize and develop our applications in a faster way so for me to develop an application it doesn't take much time by using the pega platform so pega platform will bring certain libraries so those libraries uh, i'm saying in terms of libraries because uh, it's a it's kind of a jars that you will use in in java lib right so in a similar way pega provides certain rules already built so those rules we will utilize it and that rules will help us to easily develop certain things okay so this platform will bring us certain components okay and that platform uh, by using this platform we can easily develop the business process management applications all right so similarly as like i have mentioned the business process management there is a crm also involved customer relationship management okay so pega even supports the customer relationship management which is an additional paid one all right so this customer relationship management is another a framework we can say so which is again a separate licensed one and this customer relationship management is also uh, going to have a bpm concepts involved in a similar way so the same thing whatever you see the dev studio it is also having the same but it is an additional paid component additional paid component which gives us the customer representative customer relationship how to uh, how to have the customer relationship just like having the phone call to a customer service representative and then you can initiate certain tasks let's say if i call to a customer service representative and i will ask let me open up uh, update my address in my bank account so this is my, my i have to access so service representative i will just call and i will just inform her or he him that I want to update my account address. So the customer uh, service representative is having an access to the application. They can update via the simple tasks, which we call it as a case types. So here, whatever we define as of now, this is a blank application. This is not a, this is doesn't have any tasks. So this is just a base application right now, but whatever we create at that time, we define the case types which is nothing but the tasks to do as part of this businesses to achieve whatever the tasks that can be done we are going to define those case types here okay so something similar to this ppt as i have shown you for this recruitment application i can define the multiple case types one is for a job a, a job offer okay so all these are the different phases which we are going to cover as part of the case type okay so the application is a higher terminology which is a container to access what all the features which are being provided as part of that application okay so this pega platform is always the base library we can call it as a library for now so which will provide certain rule types to with, by utilizing these rules, we can easily develop the business process management applications. All right. Now, moving on to the next option called configure. So these you can see here, these are called as a rule categories. So whatever the rules that you de de uh, create, so there are certain uh, management of these rules. So for managing these rules, we call these are called as a landing pages. Okay, so they are all are technical related, but as of now, just remember that these are the navigations to the landing page. Landing page is nothing but to manage certain rules. We have all these are called for rules only. Okay, so there are different type of rules available to manage those rules in an effective way. There are certain landing pages options available for us. So we need to know certain landing pages, not all of them at this moment, but for a system architect level, you just call it, call these as a landing pages to manage the rules. All right. So some of them are monitoring related. Some of them are uh, uh, modeling. Okay. Uh, so performance wise or database wise, or uh, we can call it as upgrade wise. So some of the options you may utilize it. Okay. So by using these landing pages. 
we will go in detail later but as of now just remember that those are called as the landing pages all right so here you can see the launch portal option so this launch portal is nothing but there is a user who logs in so they have an access to the end user portal okay so everyone won't be accessing the dev studio as a developers we are using the dev studio but as an end customer who for whom we are developing this application they will have an access to the portal okay so those portals you can visualize by launching the portal so once you develop a portal you can see that portals will appear under this launch portal so this is for our for our testing purpose okay so as a developer if you will access the end user portal whatever you developed it so those things you can verify from this option launch portal okay so here you can see this is how the end user will look into the application so as a end user if i logs in so they can see in this way this is the default pega provided one you can customize as per your client okay so the client's logo you will see here the client name you will see here and the necessary options to utilize the application you can verify over here <coughs> so here this is a portal which we called as a end user portals this portal is a development portal this portal is a end user portal all right so end customers who are given the access to verify the options or to use the application or to create the task or update the task or any kind of business that they are going to perform they will utilize the end user portals all right so they are not going to give the access to the dev studio so once they log in directly they will be given the access to this portal itself okay so as a customer if i log in so i will be redirected to this screen not to the dev studio okay so as a business user as a production user i will be used utilizing the options provided to me here okay so here you can see that an options provided something like create okay so i can create the case types <coughs> or tasks you can call it as okay so as of now i have it defined any case types over here if i have, would have defined it i would i can create any of the cases okay so case is nothing but the business tasks that i have to do it okay so business tasks that i need to initiate it so let's say this is my recruitment application what i can create i can create for applying for a job okay so i can create a case with applying for a job okay so where i will define the procedure what has to be taken care of. so once i have taken all the inputs for a candidate specific items okay so candidate's name first name last name and the candidate resume so all these options i will be creating in the format of a ui what all the things that i have to take it okay so once i take that input then i am okay to proceed for the next subsequent stages all right so once you are creating a case so whatever the things that you need to do it as a person who you who logged in you can see the name of the person who logged in here okay so here you can see the users who are associated who are in the same role so you can see over here that means so the people who are belonging to the same team you can see over here all right so here we call it as a work group all right so here you can see the name called as work group so some of the terminologies as per pega is work group is nothing but the team group okay the team name you can say okay so here let's say as a recruiters work group if i say i can see the list of team members who belongs to my team okay so there might be one team name okay who is going to work specifically for the same role okay so let's say there is a recruiters work group so what happens is i can see the list of recruiters names over here similarly i can create one team group 
which the name interview panel. So once I select that particular group, it will be automatically showing me the list of team members who belongs to the interview panel. Okay, so in that way, I can have multiple teams. Okay, so those teams, team names I can see over here. All right, so this is something called as a work group. We can tag a person to a work group. Okay, so a person who logged in, we can tag that person to which team he belongs to. Okay, I will show you one sample rule which the operator rule I can see from the bottom left corner. You can navigate to this uh, the first letter of the user ID which I have used and click on operator. <clears throat> so this is one of the rule form that you see. So operator ID is the name of the rule form. Okay, so what I have used is administrator at pega.com. This is the name of the rule. Okay, so just like in the class, sorry, uh, so just like in the Java, you will use the name of the class, right? So in that similar way, where every rule that you create, it's a unique ID. Okay, so a unique identifier, it is used for that particular rule type. So this is basically you can call it as a rule type. So that means any uh, every rule that you create, it should be a unique of that particular rule type. Okay, so you can see this administrator at pega.com belongs to one of the team that you can see under the tab work. So here you can see which team he belongs to. He can be part of multiple teams as well. Okay, so in the similar way, in the similar way, you will have different tabs for every rule type. Okay, so this operator ID rule type has four tabs. Okay, so there are multiple options provided under each and every rule form. We need to understand what these options are. Okay, so we just need to familiar, familiarize with the terminology and then we need to know what are the options that we need to configure for every rule type? Okay, so basically what, what we will discuss is whatever the major things, whatever prerequisites to learn in order to complete that rule to going forward. So we will just focus on those things. Okay, because there are so many options. It's not, it's not a small thing. Pega is also kind of an ocean. Okay, but for every small thing, if you try to learn and the day one itself, it will be very difficult okay so as a beginner as a system architects what needs to be known for you so i will be focusing mostly on that just focus what has to be learned in that particular tabs okay so this maybe this is something very important to know okay so which we will discuss about this maybe this options which you see may not be that required that much required okay so every option has some kind of option uh, some kind of uh, uh, value so what that option is going to do if you are very much uh, keen to know you can use always actions get help so you have multiple every for every option you have the uh, detailed document that you can go through that okay so here this is not coming uh, you can register via the p the email uh, which you are going to use for the cloud okay so that is something you can utilize it okay maybe this is not given okay so uh, by using this help options we will see what every option will do okay so that is something given by pega okay so it's kind of a help document that you can read to know what it is okay but at this stage whatever i am telling just focus on that all right so there is a work group which is called as a team name and this team is something like the operator who logs in he every operator who is being created they should be having one default team associated and that team is something like they are tagged to one team to work okay so that way we can specify these are the list of users who are also being belonging to the same team name all right now, I hope you are clear so far. <clears throat> Any questions? Yeah, all good. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah all good as well. All right, good. Uh, now, moving on to this options, which are default options provided in the end user portal. So for the end user, you can see there is a dash dashboard. So the dashboard is nothing but it's a summary of what the application is going to do. And that is something we are displaying to the user who logs in. Not all the options are accessible for all the operators. Okay, maybe few options may not be appearing for few of the operators. So for a few of the logins, we may not give the dashboard access, the calendar access, the reports access may not be appearing. Okay, so that means there are certain restrictions that we can include for the options that are being provided. Okay, so how to do that, I will tell you, but these are the options, but, but these are the options which are given for the administrators, operators. Okay, so by default, the dashboard is nothing but a summary of what are the things which we are doing as part of the business. Let's say as an administrator, I want to know how many recruitments happen in this month. Okay, so I want to know how many are in progress or how many are still getting the offer. I want to see in the format of a pictorial representation. I want to see a chart which will show me how many of the users are still not yet uh, uh, how many of them are, re are recruited in the last one month okay so it will give me a summary of what the application is doing with okay so such kind of summary i should able to know by looking into the dashboard so it is something we can also define as part of our application development all right moving on to the next option my work list which will show me what are the things that I need to work on? So let's say if I am an interviewer, I, need, I have logged in. So what I can see in the work list is what are the tasks that I'm, uh, I need to complete. Okay. So the task which I need to complete, let's say I have an interview task to complete. So that I will be seeing under the my work list. All right. So my work list is nothing but the subtasks which I will see under the work list. Okay, so work list is nothing but the person who has to act upon that particular task to complete is nothing but a work list. So the tasks which will need to be completed. So those all these tasks will be listed under the my work list. Okay, now I will go in detail what is work list. So work list is nothing but a assignment or we can in Bega we call it as an assignment. Okay. Every small task is called as an assignment. Case is at a high level. Assignment is at a low level. Okay. Now what is a case? What is an assignment? Case is something like you are driving a complete path of your business. Okay. So completely you have applied for a job with an uh, for ashwin let's say for the ashwin's candidate i have applied a job he is going in the process of interviews and he has got the offer letter as well now for ashwin i have followed all the processes all the stages okay so one after another i have completed each and every phase under the each and every stage okay so right from applying for a job till the offer is released everything is done all right so as part of this so these are called as the workflows so every stage will involve the workflows okay so these are something like a step-by-step -step process that we have completed it in order to receive an offer now on the name of ashwin there is a unique identity which should be tracked in the background Okay, so in our database, it should have a record ID for a particular candidate ID. Okay, so what I will be having is on the name of Ashwin, I will have a candidate ID generated. Okay, so what I will have is candidate ID 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is something like a unique identity given for a particular candidate who has applied for a job. Okay, so this particular candidate one two three four five is one of the case id which is being generated in my database okay so 
in this data uh, from the database if i want to search for this particular candidate id i should be able to know that this particular candidate where exactly he is in okay so whether he has applied for a job or uh, whether he is in this phase or this phase or this phase i should be able to track it by using this candidate id okay so this is something we can call it as case identity okay so case id we can call it as so in pega terminology we call it as a case id that means the candidate a unique record of a particular candidate's information is being captured with a case id okay so every person every record of information which is unique and that unique information which is stored in the database so that is something we will be having a unique identity and that id is called as a case id all right under each and every case id as i mentioned he has to navigate for all the all the phases so let's say this particular candidate id is being appeared for the interview panel okay now there is a interviewer who has to take the interview so there is a interview task okay so now this interview task is called as assignment okay so this is an assignment which is being allocated to a person okay so interview who has to take the interviewer who has to take this particular candidate's interview that is something an assignment to be completed now who will be completed whenever an assignment is created it should be allocated to a person okay so that is something a user has to work on the task or we can say assignment okay so there is a person who has been allocated to work or finish this particular task okay so case id is a collection of assignments it can be having multiple assignments who whom it is being associated with okay so for this same case id i can have interview task 1 interview task 2 job offer okay so whatever the task which has to be completed so every task you will be having you will be creating it and this task once it is done this assignment is finished that means it is no more existing in the data table all right so once the next task is initiated the previous task should not be existing at all in the system but case id still exists all right so initially when you start creating a case okay so whenever you start creating a case what happens you will start filling the information so once you start filling your filling the job candidates information who is applying for a particular job let's say ashwin is applying for a software trainee job so that, that software trainee job has been allocated and his details are fulfilled by the recruiter and once he schedule an interview what happens that assignment which is assigned to the recruiter of completing or adding the details so that task is completed okay so that means the case has been initiated and once the case has been initiated case has certain list of assignments to be completed by each and every user okay so every user who is working upon the tasks will be appearing under the my work list so whatever the assignments which are created as part of that particular case id so you will see those tasks appearing for the user who has to work upon okay so let's say if i am a interviewer i have logged in you will see only the interviewer task one which i need to do it okay let's say the interview second interview panel member who has logged in this interview task won't come to him okay so the task which you need, you are assigned to fulfill only that task will appear over here that means you are authorized to complete that particular assignment all right so that is something we call it as my work list so person who is assigned to only he can visualize that particular assignment if you you have complete authority to reassign that particular task let's say i am on leave and i want to reassign this particular task to somebody else so what i will do i will open that particular assignment i have an option to reassign as well 
okay it all depends on the business how you define and once you define those business accordingly it will work i hope you understand what is assignment and what is case because this is very important to know and uh, most of them they confuse over here assignment and case don't get confused case is a higher terminology assignment is a tasks okay so mind your terminology once you complete the assignment there is no more that assignment exists there is a new assignment it creates for the new person it is not going to uh, uh, rename the assignment or update the assignment with some other name okay so every task which you are going to have it is going to have a new record created in the assignment table all right so every assignment that you are going to work is a new assignment okay so so this way we have the list of assignments that you can see under the my work list all right similarly my cases are nothing but whatever you have initiated it as a recruiter i have created ashwins let's say there is a rama called another recruiter and that recruiter has initiated another person's rec record or another recruitment he has started so he can see or he can see only the cases which he has created okay whatever i created i can see in my cases whatever rama created rama can see those cases which he has created it okay so in that way you can see the one who has created the cases so only those cases can appear over here okay so in the similar way uh, there are other options are also available this is completely customization this is not always the same format this is pega provided one default end user portal our client may give some more options to uh, that appears based on our recruitment based on our uh, business okay so this is uh but basically what we need to understand is what is the case and what is the assignment whatever the things that we manage we as a customer we will use this end user portal to manage with that going back to my dev studio this is enough for the end user portal to understand with the application and here you have the create option so where you can create the rules by using this create option so you can see all these are called as the rule categories okay so these are called as rule categories under each rule category you have multiple rules okay so everything is called as a rule here okay so you can see there are a lot of rule categories available so each and every rule category has its own significance once you define that particular rule it will work accordingly okay so we'll define whatever the necessary rules which are required for starting the business application okay so by using the create options you can use it or you can use the other explorers as well to create the rules okay we can use either of this you can even easily create the new cases from create new option here so as of now you can even without using the portal as well you can create the cases if you have defined the cases over here all right so this is uh, the create option which is being there you can search for the rules by using the search option available here so you can search the name of the rule you can specify the name of the rule and click on enter or you can just click on this okay sorry you can just click on enter it will automatically search for that particular rule name okay so something like if i want to know administrator at pega.com you just click on enter you will see in this way so you will see the name of the rules available appears over here so here you can see the type is nothing but the rule type the name of the rule okay and there is something called as a class which whatever the rules that you define it is going to tag to a class which are uh, which is also prerequisite for some of the rules it's an exemption it is not tagged to any class so i will tell you what all the what is the class and in the next subsequent sessions okay but this is a place where you can search for the rule names okay so easy to uh, navigate or easy to find out any of the rule which you are looking for if you know the name all right you can use the help options so you can see there are different options available we can use the pega platform help 
Pega community. Some of them are paid ones like Pega support and all. You cannot directly reach out to support team unless you have a support and enterprise Pega version. Okay, so this is something uh, paid one. All right. So you can even use any of this Pega platform help or Pega community help to understand more about the Pega latest features and whatever the Pega options which are available. Okay, so this is completely towards the resources, the Pega resources that you can utilize it. All right, and uh, moving to the bottom of this window, you can see certain debugging tools available and performance tools also available. More frequently that we use is Tracer, Clipboard, Live UI. These are the debugging tools that we will use. And to identify some kind of uh, uh, performance related items, you can see issues, performance. So you can use this issues and performance options for performance related aspects. Okay. So these are some of the debugging and performance related tools that we need to know. And the version of Pega that you want to know that you can just click on this Pega. It will give us which version of Pega it is. So this is something 8.6 version. All right. So the latest version of Pega 8.8 .8 and 8.6 doesn't have a big difference. It is the same, almost same. Okay. So there is some kind of a UI. The look and feel of the tool may change slightly. Okay because uh, there's a new version which comes with more uh, flex options. So there is a more flex options being provided. So that flex options will give us more rich user interface look, but the technical wise, whatever the concepts which are there, it is same, okay? If you go to Pega 7, the concepts are same, okay? The like case is also there in Pega 7, now also same. Assignment is also there, now also same. Okay, so there is no change in the business process modeling. Business process modeling related rule types all are same. There are few additional rules which are given, which is more supported towards the cloud. Pega 7 doesn't support cloud. Pega 8 supports cloud. Okay, so Pega 8 supports Azure cloud as well as Microsoft Azure cloud as well as AWS cloud as well. All right. So there are some additional options which are being provided. Something like if you are given some additional options, uh, post password change or next login. So this kind of options. So something like this is an unattended operator robot. Okay. So this is something like an additional option provided in Pega 8, not available in Pega 7. Okay. So such kind of things you may have seen for every rule type. Okay. But the more the rules will be common okay so whatever you see in pega 7 and in pega 8 in pega 8 uh, it's almost the same whereas if you go to pega 6 most likely there's a, a kind of a big difference in pega 6 and pega 7 versions there are a lot of rules which are not available and there's a lot of features which are mostly uh, newly added okay so there's a, a redesign happened from 6 to 7 but not seven to eight uh, there's a big difference okay so seven and eight almost same there are very 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 less applications almost like a five percentage of applications running in pega 6 we won't get a chance to work on pega 6 it's kind of a support job because there's no enhancements are going on most likely uh, almost 90 percent is 99 percent of the applications are already migrated to pega 7 and almost the people are coming to pega 8 as well all right so this is the history of uh, the pega applications with uh, with respect to the versions which are currently running now uh, in order to define the application so we have the option available we need to start from the application and here you can see there is an option called a new application all right so we have to use certain wizards okay so that wizard will help us to create a new application so you can use certain options okay to create a new application so initially when you start creating a new application you will see this option called build from scratch so these are all the existing applications which are already available so okay if in case we doesn't have any other applications created by default you will see only this application called build from scratch okay now basically what you need to understand is 
the pega how it manages the application okay so first of all we need to understand the structure how the pega will i'm not going with these uh, things because already i have given uh, uh, you already have gone through the why pega is otherwise you wouldn't come for training so this is basically to build the applications very quickly so whatever you do in java for one month you, you may do that in pega in one day itself so that way it is okay so but the only thing is you need to understand all the options which are being provided so if you understand most of the options so you will drive the application a bit faster and to automate the business operations so there are options which are being provided it will automate the business operations the same restrictions what you need to do the users who logs in whatever the capabilities which are being given for that person who logs in so to restrict it in any other uh, programming language you have to do a lot of things but in pega it is very easy okay and we have the rich user experience given in pega 8 so from pega 7 onwards it supports in chrome as well so the applications which are built in pega 7 onwards all are supportable in chrome versions and mozilla firefox and all the safari browsers and everything and it is even supported in the i tab tab as well and also in the mobile browsers as well all right so and also in pega 8 we have the templates driven user interface so there are certain templates given by using the templates we can easily drive a user experience uh, in a faster way so how you want to keep it so just like you see in the uh, uh, ppd if you want to create a new slide you have given certain templates so these are some set of templates right so whatever the data that you want to keep it okay so if i want to create one form with this way so on the top you want to place certain fields on the bottom you want to place certain fields so this similar way you can see in pega as well where you can see the drop uh, certain templates are already provided so we can utilize to place what the things you need to place on the left hand left hand side or right hand side top and bottom okay so that is something templates driven user interface which is there in pega 8 not in pega 7 okay and end to end application development components are there <clears throat> there are a lot of components which are provided uh, and especially in pega 8 the multiple components being given which which will help us to integrate with third party applications as well okay so the to integrate with something like agile methodology so you have certain components available for that and if you want to generate certain documents so there are certain components available of course those are paid everything is paid okay uh, so but there are certain components which yeah, makes the life easier uh, and no need of doing a lot of programming for that okay so all for all of these there are certain components which are available which we just included as a plugin and we can utilize it just like in the chrome you can have certain extensions that you can include so similar to that you can include the plugins as a component which you can include and reuse it so where to include those components i will show you and uh, it is compatible with the web and mobile applications as you as i mentioned already and supported with all the underlying database models okay so once you develop an application you doesn't need to worry about which database underlying database is being used you doesn't need to do you doesn't need to write an sql queries for anywhere okay so sql or queries are automatically created based on the underlying database which is being used if you are using the db2 it will give us the db2 related script if you are using the sql it will give us the sql related script so once you develop the tool once you whatever the things that you develop it you doesn't need to worry on the database which you are utilizing here. you you won't be writing any sql queries in the backend okay so pega will automatically create the necessary sql queries which it has to execute based on the database which is being configured in the infrastructure okay so that is pega infrastructure pega will automatically take care of those the infrastructure related things okay so database no need to worry cloud support and robotics so pega 8 onwards pega is giving a support for the cloud as well as robotics as well so there is a pega open span tool which is being there so that will help us to 
have a robo automations okay so robotics is also being involved in pega and also that there's a decisioning also being there in pega so sales and marketing as well okay so there's a decisioning is again another uh, 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 application which we can integrate with and use certain predictive analytics okay so something like uh, you have to get certain offers that you see in general based on the usage okay so if you are a premium customer for amazon you may have certain offers getting into your mobile notifications so that is something a uh, predictive analytics okay that means whatever the best offer that is can be provided so that it attracts you to open the amazon app and book something else okay so certain things are integrated with the decisioning and that is something the sales and decisioning marketing capabilities are also having a separate application that you can integrate in pega and uh, to learn pega no need of coding experience so that is not at all required all right moving on to this pega architecture so first you just see uh, in case of a pega architecture so basically pega is having a pega engine which will compile the code okay so pega has inbuilt capability of compiling the code so everything is since it is going to convert into java so whatever the configuration that you do it okay so it will be converting the uh, or rule into a java code okay so here it will be generating the things whatever you create whatever you create in the dev studio in the development studio it is going to create a java classes okay so that is something pega engine will take care of so pega engine is going to manage which rule has to be picked up how to use that rule so everything will be compiled in pega engine pega rules engine we call it as okay so this pega rule engine will work with java runtime environment jre okay so java runtime environment libraries are used to compile the code which is which is there with the rule forms so you will just have the rule forms so everything that you see here so we can have a rule forms defined and that rule form will be sent to the pega rule engine and it will compile the code and it is going to run and execute it okay so pega rule engine will talk to the backend repositories as well it will have that storage system where it will be managing the storage system okay so it is going to have the inbuilt memory so that memory it is going to utilize it the jvm memory it is going to utilize it to compile our code in the pega rule engine okay it will access to the database and it will be sending the cred operations all the create retrieve update and delete operations to the pega database okay so that is something like a pega rule engine will talk to the databases if there is an external systems which it has to integrate with so it is going to use those apis to talk to our external systems it will support the rest apis or the soap apis okay so any kind of apis like it could be a listeners or it could be a service emails emails okay so any kind of email services or any kind of a services that it has to talk to so it can have the api based exchange protocol okay and as i said pega is supporting on premise as well as cloud cloud is already knows that so you have infrastructure available on some other uh, cloud so cloud in the sense a common uh, paid service okay so that means a common paid service for infrastructure so that is a kind of a lease taking taking the lease on the servers whereas on premises setting up the servers in your organization itself okay so this is you pay you have purchased the servers and you are maintaining the servers cloud is someone else is uh, systems you are taking for lease okay so you are paying only the rent for that pay, uh, uh, servers which you are taking how much you are utilizing it so for that only you are paying for it okay so that is a cloud and on premises the servers you have purchased it you are maintaining your servers to run and you are keeping the space where the servers are being located now moving on to, this is already uh, i thought so app studio is the one which i will show you tomorrow dev studio 
is the one which are, we have discussed. Admin Studio is the administration related activities that we do. Prediction Studio is, uh, as I mentioned, this is purely a uh, decisioning. Okay. So whatever the decisioning analytics that we do it, so that for that it is given as a prediction studio, which is not part of our curriculum. Okay. So this is part of a decisioning management. And the certifications that we have in PEGA is certified system architect, which is a first level certification, initial beginner level certification. And the next one is certified senior system level architect certification. Okay. So once you complete the first one, then only you need to go for the next one. Okay, this is a uh, sequence that you need to go with. Okay, and the last one is PEGA certified lead system architect, which is the highest level certification in PEGA. And uh, so uh, this is something like, and we discussed about the PEGA software installation and uh, the terminologies in PEGA that we have discussed few of them here. And of course, going forward, we will learn few more. Before we create a new application, I will tell you this uh, thing, operator ID, access group and application. All right. So in order to uh, get the access to this particular application, how did you get it? So I have mentioned this operator ID, which is nothing but the person who logs in is called as operator ID. So this is the name of the rule type. This is called as a rule type. Okay. And this is the name of the rule name. Okay. So this is the name of the rule. So once you see the profile, this is something like initially whatever the name of the user who has to be uh, shown so this is the name that you can see which you can update under the full name okay so this you can update this is just a basic demographic information and which zone that you are working you can update that particular time zone okay so this is something like the specific user who is available in that particular time zone so based on that if in case you have certain details that you need to fulfill and that details will show you as per your time zone. Okay. So if you have configured this as an Australia time zone, by this time, this is already 2nd November in Australia. Right. So they may, uh, whenever you open it, the current date will show you as 2nd November. If I open the application, it, it will show me the 1st November itself. So certain details in the case or at assignment, which I will work on. So it will show based on the time zone that we have configured in the application, in the operator. So as, as soon as you log in with that particular time zone, it will show according to that. All right. And moving on to this particular thing, application access. You see, by default, we got this Pega platform. So this is something why we got, because we have given this called access group. Okay, so access group is another rule type which we have to give as a mandatory for this operator to configure. Okay, so certain things to configure, we need certain other, other rule types as well. Okay, so to define this operator, you need an access group as well. Okay, and this is mandatory. You need to give at least one access group and that should be default selected. Okay, the one which is default selected, this access group is the one which is your default access given to you. Okay, so PRPC colon administrators. Okay, so basically the access group is uh, the name of the rule and in general, the any rule names which you give, so it doesn't have any special characters. Apart from this operator ID and access group, you won't have any special characters. Every rule, it can have underscore, but nothing else. Okay. It doesn't allow you to take the name of the rule with uh, at the rate or column in between. Okay. Only these are the exceptional things. You can see operator ID and access group, which are created with uh, special uh, uh, characters allowed here. And the significance of the access group to have a column here is this is a syntax that it is being getting followed and we need to follow this given in this way itself. Okay. So here the access group, which we define, it is always the application ID followed by the role of the users who are logging in. So application ID, application ID followed by column followed by the role of the users who are logging in. 
so administrators are nothing but the role of the users role of the users who are getting logged in okay so if i try to open this rule i will show you this rule is so you can see this double circle wherever you see this double circle it is a rule that you can open from here okay and you open the rule form in the new tab okay so it opened this new rule in the new tab where you can see this access group name here okay so here this is the name of the access group uh, access group name okay and this access group is going to have wherever you see this asterisk star symbol right so this is nothing but the mandatory okay so this is the name of the application okay so this is the name of the application and this is going to have a version as well so each and every application will have a version as well so as i mentioned pega is having multiple versions so it is having the pega 8 version pega 7 version pega 6 version so the name of the application is same but you may have a different version okay if you specify 7 it will give you the features with respect to pega 7 if you specify as pega 6 it will give you the features specific to 6 okay so you have an option to change the version of the application by clicking on down arrow and if that version is available in the system right now this installation software which is given it is getting only the pega 8 version so you can see only the 8 is coming here but in case if you have the 7 version also available you can keep the version by clicking on down arrow okay so wherever you see this kind of text boxes where you see small triangle at the bottom right corner this is nothing but you have an option to choose and that options you can choose by clicking on down arrow all right so here also you can specify which application you want to point into so you can click on down arrow you can see the list of applications that you can specify okay so you can specify any application which you want to give an access for this access group the one which you which application that is being pointed that application will be your default access once you log off and log in back again so this application is something which it shows for you here all right so here the operator is responsible to give you the access group operator is having the option to specify the access group and whatever the access group which is specified that access group is responsible to give you the application which you are accessible to okay the accessible application and along with the application we need to specify the version of that application there could be multiple versions for the same application as well you can define multiple version let's say i have defined one application called abc banking application and that application for 2023 it is 07 for 2024 i it is pointed to peg 8 okay that means i can define multiple versions it could be 01 for this year 02 for next year if i want to see the features which are given in this year 2023 year itself i can see 7 uh, uh, 01 by pointing to 01 application version i can see the features which are available in 01 itself okay similarly if i want to see the features provided in 02 version i can specify the 02 version okay so that way we can have an options to provide the application version okay once you provide the version you will have authority to see the things specific to that version itself okay so access group is the place where you define the access for the application so what is the access that is there so that access you will specify under the access group so this is the place this is the heart of the place where you will define the accesses which has to be given for the user who logs in so any user who is logging into the uh, logging in so they will have to be specifying the restrictions and all in the access group itself there are multiple other things that you have in the access group. what is the options that you will have in the access group 
So when we create it, we will define our application in our access group. I'm not changing the existing access groups. I'm not updating anything in the existing access groups. If I update, it will get certainly, but I'm not updating anything in this. This is Pega provided one and anything which is Pega provided one, uh, we are not supposed to change it. Doesn't allow us to change as well. Okay, but sure. whatever we define, it will have a complete authority to change anything however you want to okay now yeah. uh, this this is access group will have few other options like portals so the portals are nothing but what are the things that you have an access to so as i said this is called as a development portal once you log in by default you are seeing the developer portal because you have mentioned this developer team portal here wherever you are seeing this double circle it is again a different rule which you can open and see there might be different configurations available in that particular rule form okay so this access group has you see definition advanced operators this operator if you see it has profile work security okay so in this way every rule type every rule form that you open it will have different options given we just need to know which option to be configured if you or if you configure properly it will work properly okay so this operator is pointed to an access group and this access group is pointed to an application along with the application you have the portals which you can access here so you can see developer is one such portal by default it is loading and apart from that you can see the end user portal as well which is called as a this is coming by default from Pega and whatever the which are coming from Pega, you can see that starts with the name called PX, PY and PZ. So you can see PY, PX are the names given. So this is something like the rules which are defined from Pega. So those are defined this way. Okay. So you can see this PX Express is nothing but the App Studio. Okay. PX Admin Studio is nothing but the Admin Studio. PX Prediction Studio is nothing but the Prediction Studio. Okay, so whatever the portals that you see here, so these are the ones, PX Express, PX Admin Studio, PX Prediction Studio. So whatever the things which are going to change, you know, whatever the accesses that you are going to provide, so those are nothing but the portals. Okay, it could be a portal of a development, or it could be a portal for the end user, which you can see the launch portal case manager. So which is this portal. You might be getting a doubt why we are getting this name called as Dev Studio, whereas it is named as developer here. So basically, if you open this rule, this is going to have the description here. So you can have the description called Dev Studio. <coughs> okay. So this description is something shown over here. For every rule, you have a description above and that description will be taken to showcase over here. You are getting Pega platform here, whereas the application name is Pega rules. So how you are getting Pega platform? If you open this rule, you can see the description should be having the Pega platform. So here you have an option to update the description of the particular rule. If you update this description, it will automatically change here as well. Okay, so wherever we are referencing the name of the rule, it doesn't show the ID, it will show the description. All right, yeah. so here, yeah. this way, it is being configured. This is the name of the rule, which is going to have certain other things. Okay, so here, the application, Pega Platform 8 application that you see, has certain things before going to this application i will complete the access group here so here below the portals you have something called as available roles what does this state says this is the role is nothing but the accessibility given to you so there are certain restrictions given with respect to the user who logs in so that restrictions you are going to do with the help of roles Okay, so roles will help us to define what you can do, what you cannot do. Okay, so these are something Pega has given the complete authority to do any job, anything in Pega. 
okay so all the accesses are given with respect to this roles which are mentioned over here so this is one of the super user role that means in pega you can do anything if you have this role you have a complete access to the database credentials so you can create update delete every instance any instance okay that is something you can do via this role okay so this is something like a user the roles is something like you have additional capabilities additional privileges for doing the read and write and update and delete operations you can see by opening each and every role you have certain other things which are specified in terms of class and doing certain things okay so you can see the read instances write instances delete instances so there are certain things uh, which we need we can configure where it will tell us there is a restriction available or not available so that restriction you will do under the access group with the help of roles this is again another rule type okay so i'm not going in detail right now but understand access group is the place where you will configure the roles which is responsible to do the restrictions the access group is the place where you can see where you can configure the portals and those portals will appear by default which one to appear and what are the other things which you can see from the once you log in okay and the application by default which one is being reflected that is also specified under the access group okay moving on to the next rule called application so in order to have an application access what is that you require you initially require an operator id and you require an access group okay and that access group is pointing to an application okay so these are the three prerequisites to get an access to the application so operator will have an access group access group will have an access to the application and application will have the libraries the libraries are called as rule sets in pega okay so whatever the rules that we will define it so those rules we will combine it and that combine or you can say a collection of the rules is called as a rule set okay so rule set is nothing but a collection of rules and that rules collection is called as named as rule set so we will have list of multiple rule sets okay so just like in java you will have multiple libraries defined one for string one for mathematical calculations calculations so something like for every lib you may have certain functions available under each and every library right so in the similar way we will also have a separate rule sets created under each and every rule set will have certain options available okay so we will collate those things collate those uh, logics in that rule and that rules we will need to associate to a rule set and that rule sets which we are authorized to use it we, we need to specify under the application so under the application you will have something called as a rule sets okay so there are certain rule sets which we will specify all these are the rule sets which have a different different rules in it okay so this pega process commander might have certain rules okay pega deployment specific to deployments it might be pega decision it might be related with some decisioning analytics okay so in that way every there are multiple rules which are there and there those different rules are being kept in these rule sets okay and every rule set will have a version as well okay so this version is nothing but the rule set the collection that you keep it it will be having a version and that version will be having certain rules specific to that version as well so what is significance of the rule set version i will tell you in the later sessions but right now understand that rule set is a container which is having a version as well which will place where you will place all the rules so whatever the rules that you create you will always tag to a rule set so here the application is also associated to a rule set you can see the name of the rule set over here so rs stands for rule set you can see the name of the rule set here okay so you have an option to edit and update the rule set as well you can see the list of rules rule sets appears on click of down arrow you can see all these are the rule sets which are available in the system 
okay so anything which starts with pega dash it's coming from the pega platform okay so whatever the rule sets that we create it doesn't starts with pega dash okay so pega dash is the reserved name given only to define the rule sets of pega itself if you try to create a rule set with the name pega dash it won't allow you to create because this is a specific convention which is being given only for the pega platform or pega tool who has created okay so pega platform which is there so they are only going to update any of the uh, rules can be created those rules under these rule sets okay we are not supposed to create any rule under these rule sets we are can create in our application in our rule sets we can define on top of it we can define our own rule sets okay so you can see every rule will have a rule set you can see the operator will also be tagged to a rule set okay but operator access group and application is a additional uh, it's a, a additional uh, sorry it's the assumption where you cannot give the rule set you can exclude the rule set and also it will allow you to save it okay uh, since this is a pega dash so we are not supposed to update anything in pega dash but in general whenever you have an operator or access group even if it doesn't associate to a rule set it still allows you but generally any rule that you create it should be associated to a rule set and a version as well okay so for example i will open the developer portal from this access group so you can see the developer portal is having the rule set name called pega desktop and it is having associated to a version 08-01-01 so this is the version which is being for, uh, under this rule set it is kept in this rule set version okay that means this rule which is created it is placed inside this rule set in this particular version all right so in this way we will have to define each and every rule tagged to a rule set which is listed under the application okay so whatever the application rule sets which are defined we can create the rules under these rule sets all right all right uh, so going to the last point like switching the application to dm sample so dm sample is again another application which you can see it is having a different access group and in this access group you have a different application okay and if you see this application has a different rule sets okay so this way you can see a different rule sets can be placed specific to that application okay specific to that application you can see and you also switch to that application you can switch to this dm sample application now and you can see this will switch the application so when it is switching all are specific to that application that you can see okay so now you can see the class definition so if you see click on the application and click on definition it will also open the same rule that you have opened from the access group okay the same rule that you see the same rule form that you see when you opened from the next access group okay the same access uh, the same application rule form is open okay so in this way there are multiple other places that you can even open it okay so something like you open the operator and then you switch to access group okay so you open the operator and then you open the access group right via this option double circle right so you open in this way this is one place you can directly also open the access group by using this option okay so it will also open the same rule form okay so this is something you will learn like you have two to three places. sometimes you can open the same rule in two two or di three different ways okay so you can open via this way or you can even search and you can open it okay so that way also you can open the same rule and you can even open the rule with the necessary rule category as well so let's say in the records explorer you have dif different type of rule categories now you need to know the rule which i need to open in which category it belongs to okay so let's say if i need to open the access group of dm sample colon administrators it should be available in which rule category so if you know that then only you can access it 
So if I go to security, you can see here there is a call access group. So that means this rule access group is available under the security category. Similarly, application, if I want to see, you can see under the application definition category. Operators, you can go for the organization category. Okay, so if you know the rule categories, then you will understand which where to find the rule. Okay, so a list of all the access groups where exactly it is available. If we want to see, you can navigate via Records Explorer and expand this category called security. So this is called as a rule category called security and you can click on access group. So what happens? It will list down what all the access groups which are available in the system. So in the system, whatever the rules which are available, all the access groups you can visualize from here. Okay. So this is, this is how one more place where you can identify the rule is available. Okay. So access groups you can fetch via the rule category if you know it okay so if you know the rule category uh, which where the rule, rule type belongs to you can expand and you can see that okay out of this access group now you can search for this dm sample okay you have an option to filter okay this is a filter icons which are appearing over here you can click on the filters and here you can see the access group name and which uh, which you can open from there as well Okay, so in this way, you can even open the operators which comes under the organization category. Okay, so operator ID is in the organization category. Application, you can see under the application definition category. Okay, so this way we can identify, we can see the rules are being organized. Okay, so the, all the rules which we created, we can find it out by using this records explorer. So records explorer will help us to open any of the rules or to visualize all the rules of that particular rule category. So with that, I will take a pause here and if you have any questions, let's go with. Okay. Yeah. All right then. Thank